Testing, 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 testing. Oh, testing. Cool. All right, Matt, it's been a minute. Good to see you, buddy. It has been. Yeah, it's good to see Matt Cannon. Yeah. In a while. You? <laughs> um, you know, Jack, you say that like I should know something, but I actually have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, you see your like, cam? I would, you, I would play Matt, into do, this uh, if you, I knew. Do you, wait, 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 but Cannon, I do you want me don't. to? All right, how about this? With no knowledge, now that you have no knowledge, do you, should I tell the story, Cannon? But you have no knowledge of what I'm talking about. <laughs> I Someone, guess. I yes. Think, I think. I think. I, right. I think we okay, should right, serve perfect. Cannon. Cannon. He's, Cannon. He's, or, uh, he's... Agreed. Oh wait, should we Let's server no first. what if we server deaf and cannon during this so he just sees <laughs> Matt's reaction? What? No, I wanna know. <laughs> That'd be funny. Oh, okay, okay. So Matt, I don't know if you <laughs> saw the D D IRL compilation I made, but there was a part I pinged you in. I was like, oh hey, here's the Matt. Oh, there's a Matt cameo in here. <laughs> and then Cannon's like, I pinged you, and then Cannon's yeah, like, Oh yeah. Oh. Oh yeah, I knew it was Matt. I could tell I heard his rat voice. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> nice dude he's like i didn't need to see him i heard him <laughs> your evil plans misc <laughs> nice. got a distinct yeah voice. Our, 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 honestly misc is dying on site i don't care if you knew or anything i have yes. I, everything i no, about changing things. This is that evil. You know they gotta they go. Gotta go. That's, These that's, people are no go. good ones. They gotta go. I, These people there are no good ones. Go, only man. chief link. <laughs> only... Oh, oh. This is exactly oh. what I wanted. Yeah, All only change. Only <laughs> changelings. <laughs> Chieflings are fine. No, no race is at fault here, but changelings. You heard it here first, folks. Matt hates certain races. <laughs> yeah, we all do. It's uh, been caught on VOD. Changelings. Yeah, Jack hates Vidalkin. Matt hates Changelings. Honestly, and here, you should have made that a character requirement. You, you should have made that a character requirement. You have to be <laughs> racist towards one of the other races. <laughs> I knew, Jack. I just knew it would just be organic, you know? <laughs> Harry's like, I could construct a world with organic racism. I didn't even have to do that. That's how good my world people, building was, guys. People like to deny reality, but this That's is the truth good my of our world. world. <laughs> It, I knew it would arise organically. Ganon hates half sex. orcs. I know you better than you know yourself. Jack hates Vidalkins. I hate changelings. We got the racism card coverage. And and Cannon hates half orcs. Mike, what do you hate? Your mom. All right. <laughs> no, Mike loves your mom. Welcome to the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> that was a real Cannon <laughs> move, right there. Mom. All right. Okay. Um, well, we're live for this, so let's get this underway. Hopefully David shows up at some point, and Will will expect some time halfway into the session or so. Uh, maybe even further than that. Let's kick off this session with a recap of last week's session. This is session 59. Last time on Tragedy of War. The session began with the faithful few emerging from a portal into Dr. Aluzad's laboratory within the basement of Zorn Manor. Roland was uh, quick to resuscitate both Braylick and Nikolai, who were laying on the floor before them. Nikolai woke up while Braylick remained unconscious. Nikolai gathered his bearings, then helped Connick move Braylick over to one of the operating tables upon Dr. Aluzad's request. Braylick's body was heavily damaged and torn from the battle prior, and so Dr. Aluzad offered his assistance in restoring him, though it would take time. Dr. Aluzad got to work, and the upstairs door swung open. A reborn man dressed in safeguard colors came down to meet the faithful few with sunken eyes. This 
once living man was Everard Zorn, Roland's estranged father, though the physical resemblance between the two was not immediately apparent. While Everard did want to reconnect with Roland in his letter, he said the opposite upon their meeting. He said he wrote the letter in a quote-unquote weakened state of mind. Who he was really calling upon, intending to call upon, was the faithful few, as their goal of the greater good aligned with uh, his own from his perspective. And that's when Peacekeeper stepped out of the shadows in front of them. Like an boss. And then a similar simulacrum stepped out of the shadows from behind them. Because he's so cool. He inquired as to the faithful few's true motivations for entering the kingdom of Forlorn. Only to see Braylick on the table beside them. The faithful few implied that they were in the city to speak with the Emperor Katal, which Peacekeeper found ill-advised. After all, the first faithful underwent a similar diplomatic mission to Sanctum not long ago, and it didn't really work out in their favor. Everard connected the dots, realizing that the faithful would not be reluctant to tell them their intentions if they were truly diplomatic. No, the faithful had come to Forlorn to slay Emperor Catal, which was revealed to not, in fact, align with Everard's immediate goal of handling the Kingdom of Sanctum and the threat of Monarch. He didn't have any intention of compromising his position within the Forlorn government. Still, there was some shred of humanity, or perhaps his familial bond, called him to offer aid in this moment. He proposed helping the faithful few gain access to the Red Citadel by bringing them in as prisoners. But in order to accomplish this, the faithful would need to be... (laughs) incapacitated, and leave their gear behind. Osiris found this suggestion quite unfavorable, insisting that there had to be another path forward. The faithful agreed, and Roland pressed Everard further. Would he be willing to use his position within the forlorn government to bring them straight to Emperor Catal, to the top of the Red Citadel. Upon this appeal, it became clear, or perhaps unclear, that Everard wasn't so stuck in his ways. Roland caught a glimpse of his father's internal conflict, a battle between who he was and apparently what he had become. A flicker of humanity, as if entering that weakened, quote-unquote, state of mind, once more his eyes glazed over. Everard obliged to his son's request for aid, and then left to make arrangements. Dr. Aluzad directed the faithful few to some cots in the corner of the laboratory. Basong... (laughs) having slept through this entire conversation did not feel like going back to sleep the session ended with Bosong accompanying Dr. Aluzad uh, in his macabre studies while the rest of uh, the faithful few rested in the corner of the basement in Zorn Manor
Scene change. I'm resting. I'm resting. I'm resting. Uh, could you role play sleeping for me? Me 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 me. I really needed that today. Okay. Um. Ambient. Arc three. Forlorn. Sounds. Let's go with rain and thunder. Whoa. Even though you guys aren't outside. Bit there's always a little bit dramatic, of... don't you think? There's always a little bit of rain in the background, if you guys haven't noticed. There's always a little bit of rain. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's a oh. motif. <laughs> God is crying. <laughs> Look upon my works, ye mighty despair. That's some Dark Souls shit right there, Harry. And then I just start monologuing. I pull out the lighthouse, uh, the lighthouse oh, monologue. Oh he's monologuing. <laughs> Hark! <laughs> Hark. So... Um, Basong is, uh, standing Basong. over in the, uh, yeah, Basong is Basongin, standing over in the, guess you could call it the experimentation area with Dr. Alizad mm -hmm. upon you all awakening, um, wasn't for all intents and purposes, it's a long rest. It wasn't like a full rest, you know what I mean? Like, you only slept for maybe max four hours. Um, just right. to Just to catch some shut-eye. Um, it's a little... It's not the most restful place, to put it lightly. Um, and the situation itself, the anticipation of what's to come... Uh, is also perhaps uh, causing uh, some of you to feel a bit restless. But nevertheless, you're able to get some sleep, recover. Um, any injuries that, you know, were still lingering from the battle before um, have kind of healed up naturally, um, uh, you know, except for Braylick. Um <laughs> he's, he's he might he might actually be worse actually no um um so he's dying yeah he flatlines <laughs> yeah you find that amusing cannon <laughs> well, the last main say... character remaining <laughs> Cannon's like my Cannon's main character like, status is increasing. I have to be the main character. <laughs> my main character status, it rises. Okay, that, was my plan all, that, that was my plan all along, <laughs> Cannon's thinking. Pretend to save the main character when really he ends up dying anyway, and I become the main character now. This yeah, is my I never story. stopped playing. I never stopped playing Misk. Idiots. <laughs> <laughs> that would actually be That was still so... the funniest mind fuck like oh. Matt experienced like ever where he was like, wait, oh no uh, and he was like having a stroke. He was like, yeah. No no no. I swear I, to god. I I quite literally <laughs> would kill on the spot, like <laughs> By the way, this is this is like I remember before this campaign started, I was like, I just want to put so many changelings in this world that that no one feels safe anymore. <laughs> that was my whole... Uh, Even Misk you? doesn't feel safe, because then Misk has to think to himself, wait, how deep are we? Yeah. How deep are we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like... No, bro, that's legit probably what Misk was thinking when fuck the fucker betrayed all of us. No, um, no, that is that is probably very Yeah, he's accurate. like, wait a second, how yeah. fucking deep are we? God, we're so deep. 
Yeah, I bet you are, Mike. <laughs> Damn it, Mike. Mike's in it right now. Um, dude, I swear to God, if one of one of the characters that came back, if one of you motherfuckers came back as a changeling this whole time, I'm gonna lose my fucking shit. The best kept secret. Um, so, is there anything you guys want to do, um, after waking up? Um, I don't know. So what exactly is your father's plan again, Roland? (laughs) Not so sure. My father doesn't have to do much besides be able to sin. We'll still have to disguise... Anyone who cannot feign death or draconic origin, I suppose. Yeah, you remember Dr. Aluzad mentioning an implement which could help with looking or being dead. Is Braylick like in like <laughs> another so, sorry like he can't, he's he's uh, like, Matt the, needs to check on the status of his real character for it's now all, <laughs> it's all one room you're kind of off um in the uh you're you're they don't uh Dr. Aluzad and Basong don't appear to be working on Braylick at the moment um do we do I see Braylick this is Nick yeah yeah Bob. yeah yeah like is he covered up or anything? <laughs> like with a blanket? Well, yeah, like, are they, like, j- just, like, we're working on him, like, dear God, don't look at, like, the in in the middle process, oh, basically. Oh, yeah, yeah. They haven't yeah, really, right? they haven't, um, I guess, uh, he looks stabilized. It doesn't look like they've started with uh, the, the operating of it all yet. It's, like, a lot of lines drawn on him and stuff and, like. Sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like a bunch of surgical. I'd say I would say Aluzad is definitely marked Braylick for pre-procedure um, planning. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> There's just like a single. You just see like a single swinging light bulb dimly like flickering over Braylick. Nikolai Bray- would like to try oh, and perceive a vision, <laughs> see if this is the right move leaving him there yeah <laughs> yeah yeah you could do that uh, make a religion check for me you, you got religion. it yep. religion my god no. <laughs> <laughs> you you attempt to uh channel your innate ability to uh, essentially what is seen is in your Culture, communicate with Umare and uh, receive premonitions on his behalf. And Umare, please guide me. <laughs> and you feel nothing, <laughs> like, uh, which is perhaps the first that might be the first time this has ever happened, where you've just been basically stonewalled when you try to see. Something the is deep. Something is deeply wrong. <laughs> I <cannot feel> Umare. <laughs> yeah. Kanek, you see. Uh, you see, um, Nikolai's... You've been follied by your gods now, Nikolai. <laughs> they do not align with your right to see into the future. You could not rely on such no. a thing. No, something is wrong. An outside source, perhaps. <laughs> Maybe or these perhaps lands... Your fate has been betrayed. It has to be these lands. Polluting my divine sense to see the future. <laughs> Perhaps Vidalkin lack the capacity to understand, or your culture does not have the phrase cope in it. But this is cope. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, uh, this is sanctum lingo. I'd much more likely believe that these lands are just pure evil, and well, of course you'd prefer is... to believe that. <laughs> we live in a land of magic. It is not, it is not far off to believe that, because of the 
the, mo the uh, necrotic nature of these lands, my gods cannot aid me whilst I am here. They have done. S they have guided me thus far to just reach these lands. <laughs> I take. Th I take this message as a. I am on my own from here on out. <laughs> Perhaps, Perhaps the future is fall. just uncertain. Well, the dash. <laughs> Matt, I love how you, like, 90% of the way close your eyes when you talk as Nikolai. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, yeah, he's... Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. And you're always leaned back. <laughs> Yes, he's high on those doo doo oh my God. He's, he's high on the, I never actually on noticed the blue that. Dust. That's hilarious. Oh my God. Mm. The raspberry dust. Blue raspberry, of course. Um. Yeah, as your guys' conversation kind of concludes. Uh. You see Dr. Aluzad gesturing to this um, specimen uh, chamber and kind of in the corner of the room. He's standing next to it with Basong. Um, it looks like it uh, contains um, some kind of small inert primordial suspended in this like viscous fluid. Um, Man, and, he and, like he's like, one. and he's like gesturing to Basong like it seems like he's trying to really drive something home to him. Do you believe this primitive fleshling to truly understand the value of our research? <laughs> no further progress in the world can be achieved if we do not teach the lesser fortunate of those knowledge bound guar is a great mystery to many though i hear that many on the cisternian shores have come into contact with such creatures it is not too far off to assume that he himself has more first-hand experience with such creatures than we do, even. I believe we would have the most first-hand experience if in <laughs> our journeys to destiny. <laughs> I wonder if these second faithful have encountered such creatures. That is a very good question indeed. You there, Anyways. Zorn. Ah, uh, yes. Have you come into contact with such creatures in your journeys? Uh, we did, actually. We crash-landed outside of, um... Well, in, um... Fuck, what's it called? Bedlam. Bedlam's borders. On our... <laughs> in the middle of a... Our flight path. And... Deep in this... Cave. Within unfathomably deep chasm in it. <laughs> we came across after crossing it. I'm sure it had to do with primordial magic, how deep it was. But <laughs> then we found a primordial locked in the ice, I believe. Most intriguing indeed. Many sightings have been uh, reported in the sands of Cistern, though I do not recall reading or hearing of any contact within the Kingdom of Bethlehem. It seemed somewhat dormant, almost. It's hard to explain. What secrets did you unveil in Bethlehem? Bethlehem is the land of the most tricky flesh beings on our journey the failure of the first faithful was attributed to the deception of fleshlings from bedlam what the, the man 
who was originally supposed to be from Haven, on our journey, stated, for Bedlam, as he departed and left us for death. Wait, what? He's talking about Illin. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, I do you think I'm just those. capping or something? Like what? <laughs> no, I, I thought I, you I'm were talking about Mist. That. Yeah. No, 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 I said no. the man from Haven. Yeah. I was from Haven. I... Uh, You're from nothing, you fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I was an elf, remember, Jack? No one can trust what you <laughs> disgusting fucking have fuckers say. Oh, yeah. Right? Ithel Brighthorn. Never forget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're crazy for that one, Harry. <laughs> um... Never forget, Nicodemus' is half-dead corpse is still somewhere in a ditch somewhere. <laughs> because he tried to save you. Nicodemus! Just another shitty John NPC. It would appear that climate does not have an effect on these primordial beings. From the hot sands of Cistern to the cold snows of Bedlam. Most curious. Indubitably. Do you know why these creatures were in Bethlehem? When we had encountered them in Destiny, it had seemed they were being created out of the Vidalcan, a corruption of the Vidalcan processes. So I why would they I... exist in Bethlehem? I honestly... I assumed that it was almost trapped there. But it does occur to me that perhaps it chose that as a spot for hibernation of some sort. Sorry, somehow I just minimized every window that I own. I don't know how that happened. Okay. Oh, you if you shake the window back and forth, it'll do that. <laughs> oh, really? You hot eat something. Yeah. Bam. Oh, I was doing that. I was dragging voice mod around. Yep. Um... Uh, well, um, yes, yes well, the primordials are quite the mysterious force in the world, though much of what I personally know about the primordial beings lies in the material in which they are, uh, Seemingly made up of. You see, Gua is a substance with the capacity to create and destroy, it would seem, being that it is used to create the Vidalcan bodies and the Vidalcan biology, and it is also used maliciously by the primordials to consume and destroy. It is in itself an unliving organism. It does not harbor life. It is an animate, yet it is also inanimate, such as that of a, well, a raised corpse, I suppose. Wherever it finds its origins, Cistern, Bedlam, Destiny, it is a wretched substance uh, I do not believe that belongs in this world. Its existence is attributed to the Cataclysm and Salas and Luez and their own eternal battle. Yes, that is what we discovered in Bedlam. In the caves, mm -hmm. these un, these unknown entities, these outer beings, gods unknown to anything we have seen, the likes of which we do not believe belong in this world. They call to us beyond their greater ice wall, 
They are something, something I've never foreseen. They don't belong here. Perhaps time has moved past the age of Celis and Luiz. Their battles seem to be a hindrance on modern civilization. <laughs> It is said that they still, uh, well, what is known of Salas and Luez comes from the histories of the giants, if one could believe that they have much history. Not one people for recording their traditions, so to speak. And so they are passed yes. down orally. But they refer to these two beings as the two true. They believe Salas and Luez are locked in, a, in eternal conflict, much like the one of our own world. What continues to emerge is, I suppose, the primordials. Maybe if these gods were to stop fighting, we could end our war too. Yes, well, that is one theory. Hypothesizing uh, on matters such as this is rather unscientific. However, there is something to be said about the origin of our own nature. The giants referred to it as the curse of the warmonger. The very thing keeping the everlasting conflict from ceasing. It permeates the empty space between you and I. The desire to dispute with one another. I see. Which reminds me. And he briskly strides over to um, the gallery that he has in the center of his experiment, of his laboratory. Um, and he begins rotating between, uh, like he interacts with a, an interface um, and he begins rotating between the different subject panels that he has set up, uh, kind of like a, you know, like a rotating gallery um, of different specimens, if you will. Mm -hmm. He turns back to all of you, eh? and if you're not nearby uh, in the lab with him, he says, uh, I might I acquire your assistance in this matter, faithful few. Um, and he just keeps rotating between the galleries. It, it's like endless, seemingly. So he's just asking me to like say when I recognize something, or he's just he's he he looks like he's gesturing you over to to come come like. Uh... Okay, yeah. I mean, I'll follow him for sure. I'm just not sure what he wants me to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Per no, se, it, it's uh, seems like he's on a string, <laughs> string of thought right now. Vo, do you uh, join them as well? Yeah, I would. Okay. And, uh, Conic? Of course. Cool. cool. Um, Dr. Aluzad, he, he keeps rotating, rotating between the subjects in the gallery, and then he stops on, um, one panel in particular. Um... <laughs> And what you see is uh, confusing, to say the least. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it, uh... <laughs> robot fucking... Huh? It looks like a, mm. a half man, half machine, 
kind of like splayed open across this panel, his limbs kind of staked into the edges of the circle. This is perhaps one of the most important research pieces we have acquired. (laughs) And he was once a man named Dalen. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a Funny. fucking minute. Oh, holy, holy shit. Wait, Mike's original Whoa. character. What the fuck happened? <laughs> Mike's like, oh. um, <laughs> Yo, what the fuck happened? Whatever Mike, bro? has become of Dalen uh, now has additional limbs as if you were like overlaid on top of another body. The skin has been peeled and flayed to reveal the flesh and metal beneath. But most notably, however, there looks to be um, a developing fetus. Fetus. (laughs) In uh, in the abdomen of this uh, flayed open man. Uh, And it's surrounded by some kind of like metal chamber. He is indeed. This is, uh, Subject Dalen. No surname. My latest effort to understand the Vidalkin design. Dalen here was very happy to volunteer for further testing to uncover the designs uh, you thought- learned by Monarch. And his mule, of course. As you can see, I am currently biologically cloning Dalen's design with an implanted mechanical womb. The option. <laughs> if I was a worm. <laughs> the offspring has almost fully come to term. And so now, Mm. it is time to extract it. However... Yikers! However... This proves... complicated. Uh Uh-huh. You see... Subject Dalen was designed to have an authoritative command over his own blood. A capability which he harnessed in his time with the living to combat his enemies. A sort of defensive mechanism instilled within him for survival. Any time I've attempted to extract the offspring his blood vacates his veins to create a physical barrier around the mechanical womb observe what is happening (laughs) it's literally alien bro it's literally that scene from alien where david is fucking like using Shaw's body to like create fucking alien. This is awesome. DNA. <laughs> this is sick. Doing? This is so fucking cool. This is so cool. <laughs> I love it. I love this so much, Harry. God, I love this fucking sick. Oh my god. I'm so. Oh, this this just gets me. Oh, this is so good. Did Jurassic Park teach you nothing? <laughs> it taught me genetics are fucking awesome. I, I can still hear about the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah, and it has to piss himself after seeing this one. Is this where you expected Dalen to end up, Mike? Uh, not exactly. <laughs> Remember, Mike, you consented to this. <laughs> oh, no, it was good. I kind of oh, thought his head would just point. be, like, on the wall somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but this is cool. <laughs> you are a womb now, Mike. You are an artificial womb. Um. <laughs> I always wanted a womb. <laughs> yeah, this is actually a political statement. No, um, 
cultural. It's not political. Um, <laughs> Dr. Aluzad reaches toward the room, like he outstretches <clears throat> his arm and reaches toward the, the, the offspring. And you watch as a transparent, almost like barrier of dark red blood apparates around the womb and it, and it stops Dr. Aluzad's hand from continuing. And when he pulls his hand away, the shield liquefies and the blood seeps back into the crevices of his open body. But it is not only limited to the womb, you see. This reaction takes place if you attempt physical contact with any portion of his body. Observe. He reaches out again, but this time toward one of Dalen's many arms. Um, and the blood flows out of his body again, quickly, almost like coagulating around his arm to create like a, a physical obstruction to keep the, uh, the flesh safe. It was only after I opened his body that this defense mechanism took effect. But it would appear that even in Dalen's fully incapacitated state, his cortex remains active. A residual amount of command is still taking place I'm over his blood. <laughs> there you go, you're good. You're good. Uh, it, it would appear that Dalen is still continuing his battle with the outside world. It is truly fascinating. I roll... What the fuck would I roll for this? Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, what would you roll for this, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> fuck it. Oh, fuck it. I want to roll a medicine check. <laughs> uh, let's see, why would I roll this medicine check here? Uh... Justify, justify, justify. <laughs> and Mike, do you remember that? Honestly, honestly, to help this madness come to an end, I want to figure out maybe if there's a way to <laughs> ease his subconscious so he's able to finish the procedure and then close Dalen up. Jesus oh, Christ. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, it's like Can boring. I roll medicine for that? Yeah, yeah, medicine. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Damn, dude. Plus Seems like eight, a crazy plus thing. <laughs> <laughs> um... Whatever is going on here, to your summary, uh, Nikolai, it doesn't seem um, natural, for one. Um, <laughs> yeah, it feels... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> really? <laughs> either. No seems artificial in many ways. Um, <clears throat> not magical, per se, but like, yeah, organically driven, but not natural. So... Um, and... Yeah, you're not entirely sure. To help him, could I do... Hold Monster? <laughs> Your understanding of that spell is it only works on a monster. Versus, like, a humanoid. The spell has no effect on undead. It doesn't oh, really? say anything. Yeah. Dang uh, it. It just says choose a creature that you can see within range. Because it doesn't say anything specific about what it works on. It's just a higher level spell than hold person. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. This hold monster is fifth level. It is a beefy spell. Would yeah, Dalen technically be undead? <laughs> I don't know, okay, Mike. Yeah, it's that, your character. I mean, yeah. Uh, this, this is, <laughs> I think, yeah, I think reborn, we talk about it. Reborn yeah, are like, considered, yeah, undead still. So I wouldn't. 
Okay. Damn. Mm. <clears throat> um, let's see here. <clears throat> this is where Dalen ends up. <laughs> <laughs> However, <clears throat> there is only so much blood in in a body. If I were to oh my god. Oh my god. distract what remains of his cortex and cause the blood to vacate toward my probes, <clears throat> one of you, the, with, the, with the gentlest of hands, could extract the baby without complication. Probably. Would you say the dexterous of hand, most dexterous of hands? I'm assuming. That's an interpretation. Ultimately, anyone Wait, what, can try. Okay, sorry for for <laughs> for for purposes. Just what was what was it he said? Like for what what was the quote he said? He said, "Uh, someone with like careful hands." Oh, the gentlest of hands. Yeah, gentlest of hands. Okay. <laughs> Bo um. song is out. <laughs> <laughs> Bo song is out, obviously. Um I mean this could Bo's very got well water be. for hands. <laughs> yeah, this is kinda gross. <laughs> <laughs> you don't wanna mix blood in with your with your <laughs> But it's your it's your previous character, Mike. <laughs> Hang on, wait. <laughs> No metagaming. <laughs> I need you all to help no me deliver baby Dalen. Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, okay. We need okay. a doctor. <laughs> okay, is, is anyone here is, any, is anyone here Nope. Special? Dex? No one's Dex. Nope. I mean, I, okay. I, I am, but... Oh, my, yeah, Mike is Dex. <laughs> Mike is a monk. Yeah. Mike, Vo, it's up to you. Vo, yeah. Vo more... you have to help. <laughs> Gross as it may oh. be, Mike, it's up to you. <laughs> Can nobody else do this? I I I I I I I I whisper to you. Well, no like... I whisper to you. Mike, you're the only one. Not to put pressure on you, but I don't know how I could what help this man any further and um I, I'd rather just him finish this procedure and put this man back together and not let whatever the hell this newborn <laughs> and whatever the hell this person is going through keep going on for an extended period of time. I think you are the only person that can do this. Okay. <laughs> um. You there, Water Jadasi. You are the only <laughs> one who can save Call baby out. Dalen. <laughs> you got five. <laughs> oh my god, five. five Let's okay. go. Dude, I'll I'll summon summon remember that time when Mike gave birth to himself? I'll summon the arms. And I'll summon... <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Excellent I'll time, Sean. I'll summon the baby. Uh, Dr. Aluzad grabs his, um, like, little metal rods, uh, his little metal probes, mm. and he's going to, uh, give one to you, Roland, uh, and one to, um, <coughs> or just one to Roland, yeah, and, uh, he'll, he'll hold the other, and then he'll, 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 uh, reach the rod out toward the body, and the blood is going to fly over to prevent the probe from touching the body. So is this something that I can use my wisdom modifier on? Because <laughs> <laughs> um, of my arms? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. If it's your arms doing the thing, then you can use your wisdom modifier. Um, what kind of... Ch uh, you're going to make a sleight of hand check? But with um, wisdom, I guess. Yes. Um, maybe just roll... Just a d20. Uh, yeah, just roll a d20. Um, and Dr. Aluzad, yeah, goes. Very good. 
Grab the child. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, uh, you, you got. Uh, Do we want to let this man <laughs> work on railing? <laughs> I'm not so sure now. Okay, you. Oh my god. You um. He's the one who's gonna be repairing Braylick, so. Oh God. Vo, you your your spectral <laughs> hands or water hands, you know, reach out toward uh, the baby, you know, like flowing out almost rapidly, and the blood immediately flows back out of the body and blocks your attempt at grabbing the child. No blood. You there, uh, Captain Zone. Yes. I need you to use the metal probe. It will oh, assist okay. him. If we preoccupy more of the <laughs> blood supply, there is less to protect the child. All right, I stand right behind Mike's <laughs> bum. <laughs> and you and you prod it. Mike's bum. You try, yeah. The blood comes out, and it and it. It prevents your prod from actually physically making contact. I see. Uh, yes, but I'll do it. I'll Excellent. Do now try again, Water Genasi. Grab the child from the mechanical womb. Six. <laughs> Plus five. The the water eleven. Flow, the water flows back out, and uh, or the water flows out, and the blood flows out, and barriers the um. <laughs> How do we know the baby's ready? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't ask that question. Um, this could be a premature uh, birth. <laughs> um, we require more metal probes. He grabs another metal probe off of his, um, off of his, uh, you know, <clears throat> examine one of his examination tables, and he hands it to you, Conic. Do you accept All the metal right. probe? Uh, yep, I grab it and I jam <laughs> it in there. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna the, let the dog out. The further away that we uh, angle the blood, the, the, the further away the prod is from the mechanical womb, the less likely it is to redirect and protect the child. All stand by me now and prod. <laughs> prod. Try again, Water Genasi. <laughs> That's a 21. Yeah, 21. So, your metal, or sorry, your, your watery <laughs> um, uh, tentacles shoot out and quickly envelop the child and oh my uh, God. and and you you yank it out um, and as you do you see like some some metal cords like become detached from the back of the child um, and like fall out of your like watery sphere that you have it encompassed in and the blood shows up just a moment too late and uh, doesn't prevent you from grabbing the baby. But now um, you've pulled the baby into your uh, watery tentacle hands, and uh, now you're holding a, a child. Uh, take it. And I toss it back to- Excellent work, Water Genasi. Wait, sorry, I, I force finish. it into his chest. <laughs> take it. <laughs> Ooh. Uh. Mike I said, said gentle I hands. I, I, Never again. Mike almost said I toss him. <laughs> what is wrong with you, Water Genasi? It's a child. It's disgusting. Oh my god. The birth of a new life is a miracle to this world. So war-torn and horrible. Can I do a medicine check on, on just look at the child, basically? Yeah, yeah, you can medic medicine check the child. <laughs> yeah, like, like, is it a regular child? They're like, what the fuck is, what the fuck is, is it talking? <laughs> it's the child talking. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, this is actually uh, your back. way to put it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Welcome back, Dylan. <laughs> uh, where am I? 
<laughs> um, yeah, you look at the, the child, um, Nikolai, and you can immediately see that there are some differences here. Um, it, first of all, does look to be a tad underdeveloped. Uh, I knew it. Which is weird because he said it had almost come to term, so now it's time to remove it. You don't know why he didn't wait for it to fully come to term, but uh, nevertheless, the baby has been born. Um, why is it? Why? Why? <laughs> why you um, no arguing. The baby is born. New life. <laughs> New. You say, you say it was time for the baby to be born, but by my looks of it, the, the child seems to be premature. Correct. That is the exact moment in in the birth cycle in which the baby is most ready to be born. They are most impacted by external stimuli in this state. Can I roll an insight as to what he means by Does that? that? Seem a little, it seems a little inhumane. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> We're doing good research here, gentlemen. We're doing good research. <laughs> you guys, we're uh, researchers, we're researchers, we're researching. I don't know how I feel about this. Um, no, 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 guys, we're researching. <laughs> we're researching, we're researching. Um, Nikolai, you insight, what are you inciting? Uh -huh. uh, the, the, um, the legitimacy of the claim? <laughs> I'm inciting if he really does mean to like alter this baby and like to basically put it through torture or some shit. You don't. Exper if he's experimenting on the child, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Why so you get the impression from that insight role that he is not uh, planning to do anything with the child. You see, your task does not end he's here. He's gonna make us. What I mean by external stimuli, the child is a, is in a very malleable state, developmentally speaking. I'm not ready to be a parent. <laughs> <laughs> the child. No! <laughs> no, you fucking don't you dare fucking go. You see, in a very important part of its development, you for my research, of course, is to stain its tongue with the blood of a dragonborn. I was, uh, I was intending to acquire this substance with a, via illicit means, as this reagent is quite rare here in Forlorn. What the fuck am I hearing? And uh, quite, quite frowned Reagent? upon if, uh... <laughs> it's, it's quite frowned upon to, uh, of course, obtain such a, uh... uh a, a reagent, reagent for, uh, experimental purposes. However, it is imperative that the child's <clears throat> glands are wetted with that of the blood of a dragonborn. And it would seem that there is a crossover in terms of uh, events that are transpiring at this current moment in time. A crossover? <laughs> Additionally, it is good to expose the child to conflict in this pre-developmental stage. Uh, I'm pretty sure everything I've heard about parenting says that conflict is a bad thing. Do you say I... that in character? I, uh, <laughs> I, I feel uh, like... Uh, I, I guess instead I would say something like... Is this... Boy. This is, is still it? like a... Person. Right? I... <laughs> I... I am confused by your question. All flesh is flesh. All flesh is flesh, Captain Zorn. Precisely. Thank you, Peacekeeper. 
Well, I just cons I'm concerned about perhaps using uh, a fully agent, sentient, higher life form for, for experimentation. I will not be experimenting on the child. <laughs> Technically, <laughs> I am. I am simply asking you to. Oh my God! <laughs> You're death stranding us. To take the child, wet his tongue with the uh, with with the blood of a dragonborn. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. The events that line up. Yes, this would be convenient for you. I suppose this. <laughs> This makes I sense. I want to no no fuck off fuck off Jack. I want I want this to read Conic no right sense. now. I want to I want to I want to know if Conic What's is about? actually down with this or if he's just he's just trying to move the conversation along. I, no, Conic's I down know. with it. He Conic doesn't care. Conic doesn't what care the? about this. That's why he's down with it. What the fuck? He doesn't know what this is. He he's confused as fuck. He's like, what the fuck is this? doesn't know what this shit is. It's weird, though, but you know what? He's down. Whatever. <laughs> Fuck it. We ball. Fuck it. We ball, guys. Fuck it. We ball. Whatever happened to fuck it. We ball, guys. Didn't we use the hey. fuck it. We ball. I don't believe that the water genasi after his previous display is most suited for the task of transporting this child. Who among you so is gentle enough to carry a child? We're not. Wait. <laughs> I can't bring a baby onto a <laughs> war field. Baby. Shut up, Mike. <laughs> Mike, you fuck. What if it gets hurt or something? I have to worry about protecting myself, my comrades, and this baby? No, no, you don't have to protect the child. But Why you not? must. <laughs> uh, you what simply... is the durability of this? You need creature? to return its remains to me, should it uh, become deceased. What is the durability of this creature? I mean, should it become deceased? <laughs> the durability is, uh, well, emotionally and mentally speaking, it is quite malleable. Physically, however, it has been reinforced, especially with the developmental. Um, well, the biological characteristics of his, uh, father. Can it still do the blood thing? That is a good question. An experiment, if you will. Drop the baby. Well, Wait. or we could try and poke it with something mm -hmm. it wouldn't like, and then if it stops us, then... No, drop oh. it. He drops the baby. No. <laughs> <laughs> Since he's carrying it, uh, yes, and Paga. the the blood uh, um, vacates the baby, uh, the baby from the, the 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 it comes out of its mouth, and then it creates like this little bubble around the baby, and uh, you can hear like muted crying coming from within the uh, the bubble. But then the blood liquefies and then seeps back into the baby, and the child is just resting on the floor unharmed. Ooh. There, you see, the child will look after itself. It only needs a responsible adult to transport it. I. Well, I have more questions. While that does lead to more questions, I suppose it makes me feel a little better somehow. Captain Zorn, you are quite uh, the moral maker. Why not I yourself mean... being the uh, caretaker for Baby Dalen? I'm sure. Uh... I really don't like how he doesn't call it Baby. He calls it Baby Dalen. Actually, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Calling this thing Baby Dalen is weird as fuck. I'm gonna be real. <laughs> he picks up. He picks up the child and he and he holds it out to you. What does your moral compass say? <laughs> yeah, I can. I. So. <laughs> Do you, you have like the, a... You, you want to be the main character so bad, right? So, yeah, hold the fetus. 
<laughs> These are words put into my mouth, good sir. Hold the fetus. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> Do you have like a like a holder or something? Like a fetus. <laughs> If you don't hold the fetus, it's gonna be fetus delete us soon. Okay, <laughs> you gotta hold the fetus. Uh, okay, but fine. Of course. I take the baby. He he hands you the baby, and the baby uh, kind of, <clears throat> you know, you take it in your arms, and it kind of looks up at you with these big eyes, um, and kind of like a slightly oversized cranium <laughs> um, uh, compared to the rest of its body. Um, but it it uh, just kind of like blows a little air out of its mouth. Um, can breathe. Mm hmm. Uh, wow, 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 wow. Yes, and here you are. He hands you, like, what looks like this leather strapped, like, baby carrier that can be uh, put strapped to the front of your body so that the baby sits at the front. Um, and, uh,. Um, it, it, it looks to be adjustable for, for, uh, the, well, the baby's, nice. um, premature, uh, size. Uh-huh. <laughs> Ain't no way Roland's going into battle with a fucking baby carrier <laughs> on his fucking chest. That is so Couldn't, couldn't wait till we leave for <laughs> Lorne, perhaps? I mean... No, it needs the blood of a dragon, Cannon. I think we're about to go into quite a... <laughs> yeah, Cannon, it needs the blood of a dragon. <laughs> Cannon, it, it needs the blood of a dragon. That it happens during the blood this back. I mean... specific phase of its development. No, the child must know conflict. <laughs> it is mandatory for the for the procedure. Yes. This makes sense. Makes I a suppose lot of sense. if this is equivalent, if this is um a form of payment towards. My father's services to us, then I can accept it. Perfect. Wunderbar. Most agreeable. Thank you very much, Captain Zorn. You are furthering a generation's worth of research. Hey, David, we just gave birth. David, we have a child. <laughs> what? We have a kid, David. Oh, We're gonna buy a so zoo. <laughs> Hey David, what? we just we just gave birth to Mike's character. <laughs> we did just give birth to Mike's character. We just delivered Mike's baby, baby Dalen. I don't. Um. <laughs> <laughs> right, David, 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 it David, must sound David, like we're David, David. We are not joking. David, <laughs> this is one like one hundred percent. This is literally what has happened. No shit. Like, okay, but who gave birth to Mike's character? <laughs> well, Dalen <laughs> was doing... literally, literally, Mike delivered his own baby. Dalen gave was... birth to baby Dalen. His own clone. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. Um, <laughs> this is it... what's happening I right love now. This so much. It's good to know that in some small, fucked up way, we're getting reinforcements. <laughs> it, hey, yeah, have... think of it that way. Small, small and powers. fucked up. Perfect. It does David, we basically just powers. created the blood womb paintings, okay? We basically just did that. Oh god. We tried we needed a lot of people to birth it we because just, it we just just we just magic. we just Kenjaku, David. We just Kenjaku the blood womb paintings. Oh god. Well we we can we can Jaku now, baby. I didn't happen to miss any combat, did I? I got some retarded no. shit planned this session. Don't worry, David, you didn't miss any combat. The most important thing for you. Good. That's what, that's what I'm here This for. was some mental combat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> In a way. Yeah, um, kind of. As you, uh, uh, Dr. Aluzad begin, uh, put, goes to put the metal prods away, and he turns around and seems like he's, uh, moved on to another task now that that one is complete and uh he's uh, been dumped this baby dude <laughs> and you are holding a child as you turn around and uh your your uh father everard zorn is standing by the base of the steps leading up to uh the upstairs of the manor uh he's got his hands behind his back standing at attention uh 
evidently watching this all transpire. Uh, and he was really into this. <laughs> <laughs> he was here the whole time? He's been watching. That's disgusting. <laughs> Oh my god. He he kind of brings a hand up to his chin as he sees you holding the child and he looks his eyes drift down to the child and, and then he looks at you. Are uh, Are you all quite ready to depart? Yes. I suppose I, so. I don't think I'm mentally... <laughs> I'm so <laughs> mentally there. Wait, right now. do we have to mask the baby's scent? Baby Dylan's scent? <laughs> well, Remember, I... Mike, you consented to this. <laughs> <laughs> Michael can send to anything as long as he thinks it's funny. <laughs> yeah, would you, right. Mike, like Mike would you have consented to this if, if I brought this to you? I would probably. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have said no. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> okay. Um. He uh says um. None of you will be needing any... Uh, none of you would be needing any sort of masking of scents. It, was, it will be understood by the officials that you are living. And uh, here on terms of prisonership. Oh, now, I forgot, yes. You will not need to be incapacitated as previously, uh... Someone loading a nerf gun? <laughs> yeah, who's, like, arming up ready to kill the Dragon Emperor right now? What the fuck? You got a Glock, bro? Like, is this how we're killing the Dragon Emperor? <laughs> who's Glocked uh, up? Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh shit, David's locking up right now. He's getting home invaded. Hey, it's not a nerf gun. <laughs> Fucking Chicago out here, bro. David's getting ready. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. David, you need backup? Hold up. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. It's fine. Man, it's, I know we were ass ain't strapped, Matt. So, is is there anything else that you guys want to I do? Am I have been thinking about it, though, Cannon, actually. Getting a gun. It's really easy. <laughs> yeah, I, dude, I, fu I know. Wait, guys, yeah, let's not get Harry Stream demonetized. Oh, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. sorry. Guns? Oh, no. Uh, but uh right. yeah no I think we're ready to uh we're ready to fuck. Me when I'm there. Um okay yeah <laughs> if you guys don't have anything else you want to do before you leave um you'll uh Everard will nod his head. Um <clears throat> we'll get rid of that uh, art that lovely art on the screen. Um and we will the uh the corpses that they wheeled into this place, none of them happen to be wearing a set of half plates, do they? <laughs> David, you motherfucker. <laughs> Would you like to investigate the bodies? Yeah, why not? Okay, go ahead. Roll investigation. Yeah, I just gotta pull up the sheet. And investigation. Uh, despite these soldiers, uh, these corpses being of soldiers, uh, run off from the battles up above, uh, does not I know I that does not appear that. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Um, it does appear that while some of the metals are scorched and destroyed and bent and basically unwearable, uh, you do find a set of relatively snug half plate and it belongs to a safe guardian uniform oh boy now now i'll get mistaken as a racist 
<laughs> Wait. Yeah, safe guardians are racist. <laughs> so is everyone else. Nah. Specifically safeguard. Would you like safeguard. to take the armor? Yes, please. Okay, you can add safeguard half plate to your inventory. I'm definitely not racist. <laughs> Anything. Right, you're speechless. <laughs> that sounds like something. This is a banger session. Say. This is a banger session. Um, Can't believe Will missed this. I know. I, I know he Will would have loved giving birth. He would have ate up Baby Dalian. Um, I didn't know that was an option. Oh yeah, you can always eat the baby. How many hit points does that regen? Where uh, eating the baby? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, is that yeah, like David's a, a not opposed to cannibalism. We'll say do what he must. Uh, we'll say one hit point per limb. What? Okay, the? but what if you run out of limbs? Penis. <laughs> Penis. <laughs> hey, I said it was a cannibal, not a rabbi. All right. Um. <laughs> so we're that talking five hit points. <laughs> is it total? Is yeah. Head a limb? Well, we'll say. <laughs> We'll say that the uh, the brain is worth two, yeah. Oh, um, seven hit points. You have to get past the blood barricade, though, you know. Um, Lovely. <clears throat> okay. You're... No, David, legit, the baby has blood manipulation. So. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's oh. what I mean. We literally made Choso out here. I see. Um, as you guys are following... Everard Zorn up the stairs to the upper level. Hear Dr. Aluzad call out to you from below. Be, war Be forewarned, faithful. There are far worse forces in this world than necromancy. And we'll say the door swings shut behind you the creaking basement door um and you find yourselves in a very large foyer um at one time this might have been a grand foyer with its black stone floors and uh carefully carved furnishings but now it lies in disarray. It's covered in a layer of dust and cobwebs. There's these faded tapestries and cracked oil paintings, uh, some portraits of uh, Everard Zorn, much like the art that you see, except like a cracked oil painting version. Uh, sagging furniture from the old age and forlornian banners hang from the tops of columns uh, as you pass them by and at the bottom of these columns you see display cases um, containing wartime relics and um, many military accolades um, Your footsteps echo as you follow behind Everard. His eyes focused straight ahead on the front door of the manor. You can't help but recognize uh, the irony of this man, so apparently devoted to Forlorn, is the one to help you reach the top of the Red Citadel to kill its ruler. I mean, they just gave him what he wanted, right? Like, it's not forlorn special, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's your intuition. Do, 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 do. And he grabs the handle and uh, kind of gives a look back to you all. Um... And says, remember to follow close behind me. 
do not stray from the back. If you are to be sighted, you are to be sighted by my side. We cannot risk separation prior to entering the Red Citadel. Is that wholly understood? Not. Oh, not. Good. And he opens the door. And there's this wave of heat. You know how, like, you'll open up, like, a door to a building that's, like, way too air-conditioned? And, like, oh, yeah. you just get blasted by the AC? This is, like, the heat version of it. Where it's just this massive heat wave that just flies into the room the moment he opens this door. Um, and you step out into the kingdom of Forlorn for the very first time. Damn, bro. And you're immediately very aware of the verticality of this place you are in. You're standing on the porch. Porch, whatever the fuck you want to call it, of Zorn Manor. Um, which is apparently built into the side of a rock shelf. There's these shoots of lava descending from the surrounding walls, pouring into this molten chasm below. Like when you look down, there's just this vat of lava and bubbling magma. Um, it looks like the lava burned away much of the surrounding foundation of this place um, and it's just sinking deeper and deeper into the foundation causing the chasm to be ever growing ever you know further downward um, it would appear that the streets of forlorn quote unquote are um, more like brimstone bridges at least in this part of the city. There's mm. like a haze to this place. Very crimson. As if you were like in a microwave. The heat is unbearable. And well, it's bearable. But you imagine not for a long period of time. Um, doesn't seem very suited to... Um, yourself or Evrard's for that matter uh, as you see him pull out a handkerchief with his good arm and he dabs away at the sweat Damn. <laughs> please follow me and he step step steps down into the bridge area and you all begin your ascent up toward what you can only presume to be the Red Citadel, though you don't see it yet. <clears throat> and as you walk around, um, as was kind of divulged in a previous conversation, Zorn Manor is kind of in like a higher district within Forlorn um, which is interesting in that it doesn't really seem like a very nice place uh, obviously living conditions aside for um, you know humanoids such as yourselves like looks like you could just slip off and die any given point um, there's ruined buildings um say kind of like as you round one of the bends up ahead you see this disheveled destroyed building uh, that looks very similar to Zorn Manor um, it just looks absolutely um, crushed and crumbled um, it's foundation crumbling almost into the molten chasm below you imagine it's only a number of 
days before it happens. Um, mm. But that said, you don't see any reborn up here, really. You don't see much of anyone. Um, you do see... the shapes of Dragonborn up on kind of the rock shelves above you and below you, but none in your direct path. And as you pass by with Everard, you definitely garner some looks, um, but none of them say anything. You just see fiery eyes kind of watching you as you progress through the city. Do we recognize any of these bastards? <laughs> um, you want to make a perception check? I want to see if Molka is here. <laughs> Molka, king of the cunts. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. More Whoa. like king of the cunts, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah, where's that from? Sounds like something. It sounds like a Game of Thrones line. But it does sound like a up. Game of Thrones line, yeah. Um, you do not see Mulka. Um, you, well, I mean, from Connick's perspective, what you would think is that any one of these could be Mulka. You know what I mean? Um, and you were all Mulka. Every, every passing Dragonborn silhouette you expect to, um, feel this impending, um, necromantic energy, this permeating necromantic energy, uh, from one of them, but realistically, it's just kind of all around you, Connick. Uh, though your perception is low, magically speaking, you can feel that this place is rotting, you know? It is not... So they're um, all Negan. Uh, yeah, well, well, the Dragonborn don't seem um, dead, you know, but um, just I'm the... Um, Negan. They'll be kind of mid-conversation, then they'll both turn to look, and then they'll kind of walk away from the ledge so you can't see them anymore. Um, and the sting of the sulfuric air around you uh, follows you as you continue to follow Everard. And uh, Roland will say you're kind of behind your uh, father most primarily like in the marching order um, mm -hmm. and uh, you see he, he glances somewhat over his shoulder and his eyes meet yours and he looks ahead again I is he bullet a little nervous the you want to make an insight check? Yeah, how do you? Uh... <laughs> Let's see. I love the dramatic walks up to the evil uh, government building. I'll take a 21. Yeah. Um Harry just admitted that they're objectively evil. Ooh. <laughs> world world of you destroyed. By design. No. <laughs> <laughs> My immersion is gone. I've screwed. Now I know they're evil. I screwed it. Um it was supposed to be morally ambiguous. <laughs> oh, well. We'll see. Um he wills here. Will. Will, you're just in time to get fucked. My favorite. A, a baby. Will, we gave birth to Mike. Mike gave birth to Mike, actually. He gave birth? <laughs> what? It was crazy. He had to be there. <laughs> what? We have a baby, though. Roland is carrying um, a child in, like, a little child carrier on uh, the front of his chest. Uh-huh. <laughs> who's, who's, who's this child belong to? It's it's Dalen. Dalen, baby Dalen. Dalen, and also helped give birth to Dalen. 
I think it makes more sense if I just flash the image for you. So Dalen would make was... more sense. <laughs> <laughs> so Dalen was one of the experiments that uh, Peacekeeper and uh, what's his fuck Doctor Alizad was, was conducting. This this world is imperfect. Mike uh, Mike consented to this, by the way. Well, they have to destroy it <laughs> and make it as beautiful as me. And okay. Mike consented to this. Basically, Doctor Aluzad cloned Dalen, uh, inside of Dalen, and then you guys, uh, well, your character's involvement is unspoken, but uh, helped deliver the child. And uh, now Doctor Aluzad has tasked tasked you guys on top of your goal to kill uh, the Emperor to wet the child's uh, tongue with the blood of a dragonborn. Uh, it is necessary for the research. It's kind of return payment for him sneaking us in. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> is he well, uh, so still, is, he a clo- is he a cloned reborn or is he like a human child now? It's he's like a, baby, a weird freshly thing. Born. You, you he also get... has protective blood magic. Yeah. Um. Or Roland, a blood barrier will. Roland, with you holding the child, you you don't detect a heartbeat, um, but the child appears, um, uh, you know. Well, that's good to know. So they're cloning <laughs> reborn. <laughs> Another definitely not suspicious and you know, potential <laughs> undead army, but you know, all right, I, I see where we're at. Not okay. evil, not evil, not evil, not evil, not evil. I I follow. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> so now yep, yep. you guys are leaving Zorn Manor and you've been walking through the city of Forlorn to uh, following uh, Everard uh, to get to the Red Citadel um, and fulfill the assignment set, uh, given to you by, I guess, the Seraph? I don't know. He's yeah, I guess now, so. I guess. We're kind of... Operating on our own now that the service yeah, is yeah. dead. Yeah, you're I right. mean, it's only been a, it's only been like what two days, not even. Yeah. If anything, we should report back to Safeguard and follow the orders of the other, the new, the Goliath captain, who's probably now <laughs> the new leader of Safeguard. Who's saying what? What? Ken hadn't considered this outcome. No, no. When you said when you said Mike consented, I was like, this is the most Mike thing ever. Mike would love to be a fetus child. Like he did, he did say I always wanted a woo. Mike consented to this. I know. Of course he is. In um, a way. In a way, I consented. Yeah. Not <laughs> ambiguous. Yeah. Not directly. I didn't, I didn't want to ruin it. I didn't want to ruin yeah. it for him. <laughs> he consented in a way. Um. <laughs> So, as for your insight role, Roland, <laughs> to determine if your father is, uh, how he's a feeling. Piece of shit. Uh, oh, no, that's already clear. You, you can tell that he's feeling nervous, for sure. Um, sweating profusely. You note... Um, that's just the heat, though. Right, but you know it to be, with your insight check, more than that. Um, he does appear to be um while he's attempting to give off a more um stoic yeah stoic demeanor he's uh he's he's quite the opposite uh you can tell um but anyone would be probably in his situation given what he's, he's putting um, everything on the line for his what son he's doing yeah um like a hero and uh say uh, I apologize for sending you the letter Roland it was not What's there my... to apologize for? well it was not my intention to dredge up the past it's really no big deal Sometimes the mind of a past life wanders. He keeps looking ahead as he's talking to you. I understand. Would be crazy if he betrayed us right now. (laughs) 
I yeah. harbor no ill will, if that's what you were looking for. I do not wish for you to forgive me, Roland. It aids me to know that I did not cause you to come to this place. I fought to the death to keep this place away from you. From both of us, really. But here we find ourselves. Yes, destiny has a <laughs> sense of humor to it, doesn't it? Destiny? <laughs> destiny! No. Um. <laughs> the Fiji's child speaks. <laughs> it's his first, his first word is destiny. <laughs> um... <laughs> Everard nods. You are... Uh, you are a better man than I could have ever hoped for you to become, Rodent. I'm... Personally... Myself... Very proud... To share your blood. Yes, well, I'm happy to know that when um, asked to do the right thing, you stepped up. That was brave of you. To use your position like this. Brave is oftentimes not the best strategy. Maybe. Sometimes there isn't time or anything better, though. I can say for certain, Roland, I have had plenty of time to consider this choice. And he continues forward. <laughs> Alright. Why does this sound like a betrayal speech? No, no, I'm sure he <laughs> yeah, didn't mean stuff. anything by it. This, uh, this feels like, uh, like one of those speeches you give someone before you betray them, like, I'm sorry, I have to do this. <laughs> Good. Who That's knows? one less loose end. Who knows? <laughs> um, and as this conversation, you, do. you know, <laughs> you know, you're... I don't know, guys. You're the DM. You're the DM. I don't know. <laughs> you're the DM. You guys, know. Stop it, guys. I don't know anything. I'm just reading stuff. Um, <laughs> you can't do this. Just you're the DM. You're the DM. Rolling dice. I am just a DM rolling dice. Damn, roll. I don't what do roll dice. know what to do with an at 20 if I got one. <laughs> um, and as this conversation trails off, you look up from the ground as the bridges that you were walking upon before the black uh, the brimstone bridges um, are replaced beneath your feet instead by um, steps seemingly very ornate kind of uh, blackstone steps um, and there's a red glow that lies ahead. The heart 
of the enemy. You continue your ascent toward the main entry up these steps. As two of these dragonborn shapes that were once on the horizon are now closer in your path, approaching, descending the steps to meet you. Um, and as they do, there's this clattering of metal from chains that are draped over their neck and shoulders. Um, you are unsure as to why they have these chains as they were holding these large glaives. Oops, I just sh showed the same Ooh. thing again. Um, Necromancers. And uh -huh. these Volca volcanic all this art, dude. What the glass uh, blade at the tip of the glaive and they're wearing this black ebony plate mail with this gold trim along the edges like the collar. David you hear that? Plate armor, loot <laughs> re-roll there's this it's on someone he's on a class. living person living right now <laughs> oh. dead in the future and from the surface of this armor there's this perpetual smoke rising from its surface oh it's just <clears throat> like um uh the fucker uh what's his name uh that we fought odaving uh, odaving yeah his armor also gave off the smoke yeah yeah seems to be a, a thing both of the guards as they approach have this kind of smoky trail um and you note Everard steps forward uh from his like little cape that he has draped over his shoulder he brandishes it pulls out a little um looks like a sealed envelope and he holds it out to um the dragonborn as they approach one of them steps forward to meet Everard. What is this, Zorn? Everard doesn't seem to flinch at the Dragonborn's uh, gaseous maw as it leans in close to converse with him. Deserters from the battle to the east. They wish to provide military intelligence in exchange for their freedom. He hands the envelope to the guard. The other guard kind of stands circling off to the side staring at you with fiery eyes. Mm. Why are they not incapacitated? <laughs> don't we have chains on? <laughs> no, you don't. Oh. Um, <laughs> they could not provide the military intelligence if they were. the guard steps toward you, Roland. Yeah. I'll... This kind of looming shadow with bright orange eyes. I'll, uh, I'll take a... I'll, I'll, like, as he steps up, I'll, like, face or not looking directly at him, and I'll take a salute. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just... Is that, like, would I know if they do that in Forlorn or not? Um, <laughs> standard military thing. Do you want to do a history check before you try that? <laughs> yeah, if I could. Yeah. Oh boy, I love history. <laughs> 20? 
I don't know what the four. Do I have I seen the forlorn salute? You haven't seen it, but you've heard of it, so you'd kind of just be like guessing a little bit on how it's done. But you know okay. that it's like it's supposed to be like a fit, like a, a bald uh, hand thing to the chest. Okay, yeah, I'll look past him out of respect, and I'll just do like a <laughs> do like this thing, and I'll be like, "Sir, we're, we're sorry for the confusion. We just want to clear our names." He kind of blows smoke out of his nose on top on the top of your head. And I, re I resist coughing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Constitution save? It's a low, it, uh -oh. low DC. Low DC. We'll say it's five. <gasps> Seven. <laughs> you should have said it's an eight or Rolls something. Rolls five. <laughs> nope, he said it. Yeah. During this whole thing, my my hand is on my sword. Yeah. Like, I, not, not pulling it out, but I, like, I have like Resting. reached down. Yeah, yeah. Like resting, and I'm ready to just start fucking swinging. Yeah, the the other guard who's with Efrard is reading kind of like the documentation, and this guard, uh, after breathing smoke on your own, he, he's kind of like snaking around you. Like he snakes around the side, and he begins kind of like looking at the different individuals in the group, um, snaking between kind of like staring down, looking at like what you have on your person and things like that and then he snakes away and he looks to the group as a whole um or well no actually <laughs> he would snake uh bosong did you put on the armor as a question uh i didn't no. have it i didn't know if i had time to equip it yeah yeah so it's, you just, it's safeguard you just have armor. It. Okay. i don't know if you really want to okay. put it on or perfect, right perfect yeah um but it's it's clear enough that to them, Roland, that you're um uh from that uh area of the world as well. Right. Um just your your the 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 military esque <laughs> uh, you know, that uh, yep. kind of follows you around. Um He snakes back up to the front to you then, and uh, you're still kind of like maintaining your salute. And uh, he says, The East isn't. Reports from the East confirm the Seraph's dead. How do you feel about that? <laughs> He's literally taunting you. <laughs> And you notice he's, like, really studying you. I say, uh... Whichever you want it to be, it could be a deception or a persuasion. <laughs> Whatever your answer is. <laughs> I'll, I'll say, um... I think he outlived his stay anyways. Is Sir. That, is that a persuasion? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> so funny <laughs> he was kind of crazy at the end there yeah yeah it's not even like a full lie yeah. uh persuasion 31 <laughs> <laughs> the dragonborn bears its fangs in this kind of crooked smile what you can only assume to be a smile, given that it's just so not humanoid. Um, too many lifetimes. And then he snakes back over to the guard, still holding his glaive at the ready. Um as the other guard finishes reading. They're here to see General Osgoth. Then, uh, he looks at Everard up from his papers. You're bringing them to see the General. That is correct. 
the Dread Knights, well, the guards, Dread Knights, look to you, look to each other, and they share a sinister smile, with their razored teeth, and they both part the way. By all means. As Everard kind of safe, uh, uh, forlornian salutes and then steps, clicks his heels together and steps forward, um, up the stairs, um, looking back to you all to ensure that you're following. <laughs> And um, we go. We've been going an hour fifty. Yeah, we keep going. <laughs> okay. Um, you all continue ascending, and the guards return to their posts, following behind you. You can feel their eyes burning into the backs of your neck. Um, and you enter in through the uh, main doors of the Red Citadel. What you find inside defies the meaning of what one might consider royalty. It's just all kinds of opulence red dyed wood gilded with gold golden vases um, golden um, leafing you know on all of the um, architecture inside and there's these burning braziers uh, towering over the room as you follow this red carpet is like it's you know open for you as you step in uh, to this place um, but beyond the carpet most notably the floor is a kind of black marble almost like a like an obsidian glass effect on the floor. And so you can see into the floor a little bit. As your eyes focus on the floor itself, you, you notice something beyond. Bones. Do these look like large dragon bones? We just walked into the field museum. Do I see the bones of the dead dragon god, Harry? Frozen in the foundation of the citadel, <clears throat> apparently. Jaws are like, you know, agape with horror as you recognize these as humanoid remains. The bones of their enemies. Or your allies. preserved and proudly on display for I suppose any worthy enough to enter into this place of authority it is the most lavish and like gleaming interior you've ever set foot inside of um, including any place in any, in any other place in the world that you've ventured. There is a beauty to it and just an absolute horror to it. Basically the result of a thousand years of this conquering empire. Everard 
continues leading you all to the other side of the citadel, the far end. Um, and he stops at one of the uh, walls and he presses what looks like a sleek kind of um, metal mechanism that pushes into the stone wall. And he turns to look back to you all as a door opens to his side. And it lets out a ding. And he gestures to the door beside him. Nowhere to go but up. Unless, of course, you would rather take the stairs. Well, <laughs> I mean, I just, I wait for Mr. Zorn. He seems to be waiting for you to oh, enter. Oh, okay. What, what, if, for all intents and purposes, uh, looks to be an elevator. Yeah. Now, in character, it's uh, some kind of mechanical lift, but... Um, right. Yeah, he, he's gesturing for you all to uh, pile in. All right. Yeah. I showed a new show. Okay. People, people uh, pack into the pile elevator. In. And, Everyone, uh, get in here. And, um... Pile on. Pile on. Come on, my fellow patrons. Uh -huh. Pile I, on. I miss, uh... I miss the, uh... Hearthstone days, man. Remember, everyone, no draconic. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the elevator. <laughs> Nami bowl. Remember, no dragons. Um, and as you enter, um, there uh, is, you know, a a what do you call it? An interface of buttons. Um, next to the door, um, numbered buttons going from, uh, what looks like, um, wait, they have actual elevator technology. <laughs> this isn't just like magic. This is like actual technology. Uh huh. Disgusting. What the... It would appear oh. that way. As you're looking at it, it, it does appear to be some kind of borrowed dwarven design. Ah, of course. Um, Podunk Dragonborn couldn't make their own tech. <laughs> um, I'm not racist. I'm just ahead of the curve. Now, when you say that, Jack, it comes <laughs> off a little racist. <laughs> I'm just ahead of the curve. Um, Anyways. Quick... Intermission aside while I go pee. Oh, have fun. But also, I am fixing something on my end. Pee time. Uh, elevator break. Do you have my crib? Take the piss you need. Just don't. Oh, elevator. Your... Wait, hold up. Elevator break. We're going up an elevator right now, Matthew. I haven't had a fight in three sessions. <laughs> oh. David, you, oh. you stupid bastard. This is what I signed up for. Welcome to Tragedy of War, David. The real tragedy is there is no war. <laughs> ah, you stupid oh. You stupid bastard. Harry, go fucking take your piss. Hey, Shut that shit off. Go take, take your piss. <laughs> take it easy. Fuck you. I'm here to kill the dragon king. I understand. Exactly.
I can't and I. take it easy. <laughs> You're gonna kill the Dragon King, you fool! So you tell me with some kind of do it side squad. <laughs> That's kind of what we are. Kind of. Uh, okay. Bobby's first kill team. Here we go. Do do. All right, David, when we all die, I hope this is what you, you get what you wish for. I love combat. I'll be right back. I want to grab some food. All right, dude. Sorry, dude. Will, how was your night out? It was good. It was a good time. Is this a work thing or work friends or something? Uh, I was hanging out with uh, watching March Madness with people. Oh, nice, Bar. nice. Win or lose does not matter, Jack. It is only the fight that I desire. What that matters is. is we tried. That's some ill in logic. Mm. Who the f oh, who the fuck is Yeah. Listen, I leave the talking to you guys and I swing the hammer. That, that it's a very simple relationship. You want me to put the hammer down? <laughs> This is perfect. David, I want you to put the hammer down. Wait for me to get back. So be it. You want me to put the hammer down? I'll put the hammer down. On your face. Yeah, exactly that, actually. On your face! Alright, let's yeah. see how many crits yeah. I can get in one fight. Let's see if uh, Alex shows up and says on your left, like Will demands <laughs> in his soul. No, that's at the final. That's at the final fight of the entire kick. We're up. Uh, man, I went to go get some food here. Or whatever. Oh, we're okay. about to die. We're always about to die, Will. That's the secret. Ah, uh, we're chilling. We're Jay chilling. We're not an army anymore, Mister Beckett. We're the rebellion. Reset my foundry. If you had the chance to change your fate, would you? No. Oh. Would you? No, I don't think I will.
Um, okay, am I signed into the right one now? Nope. It made me the stream. No. I am the stream. I need I need to start logging into Foundry with the stream first and then the DM second. Yeah. Because then when I log out as the DM, it'll and I log back in, it'll put me. It won't switch accounts. It's weird. Foundry's fucking weird when you have two windows open. Uh, Jack, Ken, and Will, it's Deadpool time. What are our bets? Who's who's dying? All right. <laughs> Everyone. I, TBK. I, no one dies. TBK? Nobody TBK dies. dies. No one dies. That's, those are some slim odds. Uh, you haven't been around very long, David. No one dies. We're goaded. No We're goaded. We're goaded. <laughs> With the sauce. Pretty sure I just watched Brelic die a couple times, though. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty Did sure he he's just sleeping. I'm one of those directly. He's yeah, he's just sleeping. He's sleeping. He goes to the same place that all orcs go after fighting in combat and getting sleepy. Wait a minute. <laughs> what? The physical manifestation of hell on earth. I don't know. Orcs all go to some magical place where they get to fight and frolic with their friends for eternity. He just fell asleep, that's all. He got a little tired. Orcs don't die, they just sleep. They get a little tired. I see. Eepy. They get a little eepy sometimes, God yeah. Damn. Orcs just get eepy sometimes. What is Matt fucking eating? What is that? Yeah, so like Brelic is super dying this session. Brelic is super dead. Yeah, I know. Is right? that a real funny? Fucking yeah. I, I, heard, I, heard, I heard. I heard someone say as I as I was sitting down, "What the fuck is Matt eating?" Yeah, that was. I, I, it's uh, they're, they're cinnamon rolls. I I got them earlier today. I was originally gonna grab more pasta, right. but then um, realized it has been sitting out since seven p.m. So, so. Spot. Whatever. There's a there's a big risk. David, yeah, I wish I could eat your uh, meat pies. It just being bad. bad. <laughs> the legendary uh, meat pie. You. They're good. Let me eat the. Yeah. Meat why pie. the fuck are you cunt saying you? David's meat pies are legendary. Of, never mind. I was thinking of a different campaign. There was, I was some meat pies in a different else. campaign. I played. Yeah. The fuck oh. are you? They were made of human pie. flesh though, and they didn't tell us till after and, we ate it. And, that's, that's a skill issue. Was that mine? Problem, or is that a Watts? Uh, it was from Curse of Strahd. Oh, okay. Was it a wine or was it a wads? What a dichotomy. I think you might have done something similar, to be honest. I had some cannibal thing, but you guys didn't have to eat it. Yeah. Harry is a fan of cannibalism. Indeed. I've got some I got some weird stuff cooked up in my session sometimes. Uh, okay. Does eating baby Dalen confirm his, uh, confer his uh, blood control powers? Is that how that works? Blood control powers. Something. Yeah, sure. Blood if you magic. can, if you manage to eat Baby Dylan, you could have his blood control powers. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Tempting for David. Mm. Uh, anyway, so the um uh the the switch the 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 interface the panel on the side of this door. Um, it is numbered uh, 1 to 100. Oh. And uh, you're currently, uh, it's illuminated to be um, floor one. Uh, Clearly cringe. You're telling me they got 100 floors? Everard presses floor 100. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. The door logistically. All right, is there a hundred floors, or is there just is this just a big <laughs> dragons just feel really cool if there's the like a hundred floors? Down, <laughs> no, this, this is one of those things where it's like in the movies you see it. It's like all right, floor one hundred. It's like you don't have a hundred floors. You just yeah, the dragons just really like the idea of a hundred floors. Will okay, it's it's just the I'm, concept. You know, what? Go, can we go to floor? Can we go to floor seventy? There's actually yeah, only seventy eight floors, but they put the extra buttons there because it seemed official. All right, God. Yeah. It's like are you floor seventy two? There is nothing there. It, they only sell nothing. the panels in one hundred buttons. All right. <laughs> <laughs> 
You're telling me that Roland's jerk off of a dad really offered to let us take the fucking stairs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did say that. I say? They only built floor one and floor 100. You know, they're still... Yeah, that's, they're that's what I like imagine it is in every single movie or anything like that. Shut off, Janin. Well, we're trapped in here, so... And as the elevator <laughs> goes up, there's like this little needle that follows, you know the floor numbers uh and every time you pass one it goes bing 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 the song's gonna put on his armor bing <laughs> bing bing is there bing. like an emergency button on the uh <laughs> like um, a call for help <laughs> <laughs> yeah there looks like there's a safety mechanism put in place uh. God, somebody press it. <laughs> I need some help. Bing. 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 A song resisting their urge to slap all the Bing. buttons on the panel. Bing. So that the door opens. Bing. <laughs> Bing. And it continues like this for quite some time. You see Everard <clears throat> kind of adjusts his collar at one point. <clears throat> You know, uh, occasionally interrupting the silence. Um, Typical elevator things. One person <laughs> just coughing <laughs> as it's taking a real long time. <laughs> Everyone awkwardly checking their Bing. phone, even though there's nothing on there. Bing, <laughs> Bing. You reach. You you pass floor fifty. Bing, 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 Bing. Oh, there's no way drop. there's a hundred floors. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it in character now. It's taking forever. So will the king be um <laughs> there right as we get out? Should we be ready? <laughs> We're like, how does this work exactly? Uh, Are we killing him again? No, there there's a hallway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then and then the throne. How room. long is this hallway? <laughs> Can I quietly press floor 89? <laughs> you want to try? Make a stealth check? No. They'll know we're going to the wrong place. Ten. Do you just press it anyway? Yep. <laughs> Halen, what are you doing? Bo. <laughs> or, uh, Bo. <laughs> he calls him Dalen. My bad. The baby's <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, no. um, I, Destiny. I Bo. Did, did you see something on another floor you wanted to see? Oh, sorry, my mistake. Well, he he presses the the button and um, the it it's about like floor eighty right now. It's bing, 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 boo. So I'm actually so uh, nervous. What, what is on floor eighty? <laughs> the door yeah, opens. Um... The door opens, and it looks to be. Um, just a, a normal uh, hallway. Uh, however, there is a uh, dragonborn waiting on the other side. Um, and he uh, looks like this. It's a perfectly normal office building. <laughs> just cubicles? Yeah. Uh, where did I put him? Oh, there he is. Uh, it's a rather, you know, official-looking uh, dragonborn, militaristic, uh, clad in black leather garbs, <laughs> um, reading uh, what looks like some kind of uh, official a chess paperwork. manual. As he steps into the, uh, as he steps into the elevator with you all, and uh, the doors slowly. This is the most. This shut. is the most chaotic. This is the most chaotic <laughs> motherfucking. Sorry, I just need to mention the door, this is the most chaotic. Wait, 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 wait. So this guy door... waiting for the elevator, but didn't get any buttons? <laughs> he was just hoping that someone opened the door. The <laughs> well, it looks like it was a coincidence <laughs> that he was waiting for the elevator there. Perhaps he just pressed he... the button. Um, I look at him. And the door uh, shuts. If he's going up or going down. Or what's your stop? He so, goes and he presses floor 97. Down. As the doors shut and the elevator continues going up again. Can not just take the stairs? He looks at you, Vo. And then he looks at... Roland. And then he looks at Connick. I, I give him a nod. 
And then he looks at Nikolai. Friendly to HUD. And then he looks at Everard. So how do you want to do this? Can I <laughs> This is this Captain America moment. <laughs> yeah, Captain America. <laughs> I didn't think your clearance passed the 65th floor, Zorn. Zorn looks at the man. Harry, hold on, hold on. Harry, history check. What's the name of the dragon lord again? Katal. Katal? You would know that. I whisper yeah. over to this guy. Hail Katal. <laughs> Make a persuasion check. Hail. <laughs> 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 oh my god. <laughs> Hail you, see, you see Kotick's oh tongue, and there's it's like a snake tongue, or like a, like a you know. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> what Part the dragon actual Bing. fuck? When Bing. the dice needed him most. Bing. <laughs> Bing. And, uh, oh, and I've ever heard. The, the door, the door, uh, you know, the needle hits 97 and then, uh, you know, the elevator and, and the dragonborn is like staring at you after you say this. Um, and, uh, the door opens and he doesn't move immediately. Uh, he's like, boom. And, uh, he's looking at you. And uh, he nods his head. Hail Katal. And then he steps forward Ooh. out of the elevator door. Uh, Kanek, you interpret his expression as more confused than anything else. Uh, yeah, it's Infinity War. Y you, you seemed so persuasive that you confused him with your uh with your allegiance um and so he, he steps out into the elevator and as he's stepping out um another dragonborn is stepping in Fuck. and uh he looks like <laughs> um hey Mulka, what's up buddy <laughs> He looks. Please don't be fucking Volcano. Oh, fuck. Dude, he's... holy shit! I'm gonna. He's in like a bathrobe. <laughs> hey, Volcano, what's up, dude? It looks like this. What's happening, my brother? And oh, I've seen this image several times. He steps into the elevator with you all, and uh, what floor was this? Ninety-seven. Ninety-seven. <laughs> Ninety-seven. The forge. <laughs> Yeah, it, it would look to be as you um, as you look out into because this elevator, uh, this opening actually <laughs> opens up into not just a hallway. It is a massive hall of people, um, all different kinds. It looks to be almost like a dining area where there's lots of people, <laughs> lots of people eating. <laughs> Various foods feasting in this mess hall, um, and this this building logistically is just a. <laughs> this might be this might be the craziest part of the campaign ever. This, this building is a is a wonder. This and, is a Willy Wonka factory, actually. I know. I just, I imagine this building is like a big like like tower, and this it's building like the fucking you, Sauron you tower, floor, and there's just a like, dining hall in there. Where the heroes, are guys. Just like, it's a big tower, but every floor is like a mile long. And it's like, wait, this building doesn't actually fit like a mile's worth of like you know. <laughs> This is perfect. It's just a, it's a, it's just a magical, a magical tower that has it's as much space building. as you possibly could want. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's um, like you think the floors would be like floor two. No, it's right there. It's ninety-seven, and then the mess hall is right next to it. What's wrong, Will? Do you want to get off Mister Catal's wild ride? <laughs> no, I, 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 I just want to see more floors. I'm curious. <laughs> Um, you know they for sure guys. have like a, a brothel floor or something I love like that. This so much. This is so funny. Um, actually, I think I have ambiance for something like this. This is this is like one of the, this is like back to the puzzle, baby. We're back. This is like a puzzle moment all over again. <laughs> There's a 100 floor dungeon right for us right here. Soon we're gonna walk into a board room. <laughs> Was, I love that. That was my that. favorite. That was my favorite puzzle moment. I think. One of them. I love walking into a boardroom and pretending to do a children's birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh yeah. That was good times. Um. <clears throat> oh, here we go. I don't know if this is gonna. No, it's not gonna come through. Um. As he's walking out, another um, dragonborn is walking in, and Jesus Christ. He uh he he stands, um kind of like the elevator's pretty packed. He's larger than the other one was. Uh, and so he kind of stands like close to the door. Um, and uh, the door, uh, uh, and, and he reaches over and he presses um, floor one. And uh, oh my God. don't tell me it brings us down. I, I, will, no, I, will, I, will, I will shocking grasp this asshole if it brings us down. It'd be so funny, though. He um, presses floor one, the button lights up, and the door begins to close. And the door hits his tail. And it it reopens uh, as, he, as he kind of looks back at his tail. And he kind of brings... Uh, 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 is, is... Well, he... he, he... <laughs> The door hits his tail because he's he's looking at all of you again, and uh, he's oh my God. he says, uh, "You all are going up to the one hundredth floor. Never at the same time. We have business with General Osgoth." And, uh, <laughs> the dragonborn. Did anything happen? Huh? Oh, uh, I was gone. What happened in the last, like, few minutes? The, Someone got on. The smithy guy is on, and he's talking. Oh, to this, oh it's the smithy. Okay, so we're still in there. Okay. And he, uh, he, he looks at Everard, and he looks to you all again, and... He just nods and he says, uh, <laughs> he says, oh, I don't have clearance to the 100th floor. So he, he stands and he gets off the elevator uh, and, and he allows the door to. Uh, you think they build like two of these. <laughs> <laughs> we have clearance to the 100th floor in it. Yeah. In it, Elvna. And uh, the the elevator continues. Boom. Boom. Son of a bitch, Harry. <laughs> and you watch the the needle linger between ninety nine and a hundred for a bit. Boom. As uh, the door opens up to. Um, the top floor of uh, this citadel, supposedly. And um, <laughs> you guys, uh, Everard, Everard clicks his heels together and steps off the elevator. Um, and uh, presumably you guys follow unless you want to stay on and see what else there is. Nope. I think we'll get off. <laughs> All in favor of Yeah. <laughs> okay. You get off the elevator. Um, and you find yourself in a hallway, as Everard, um, mentioned you would. Um, Crazy. but you follow the embroidery of, uh, this red carpet. Um, as it leads you around the corner to the archway that leads into the throne room of the Red Citadel. And when you enter this chamber, what you see astounds you.
and that's where we'll call it. What fucking astounded <laughs> us, you bastard? <laughs> what He's fuck? already dead. He's already dead. <laughs> you realize that floor 100 is not even that. It's actually... <laughs> floor 100 is the jail. It's actually filled with cubicles. Get fucked. <laughs> it's actually a stop. It's actually a bunch of cubicles. They're actually selling life insurance. And they're, <laughs> they're really working hard. Oh my god. <laughs> Guys, it's an office building. In real life. <laughs> it's been an office building. Oh god! Building the time. Uh, but what the fuck, back? Harry? <laughs> oh my god, my fuck that's the end of the session. God damn it. Wait, David. <laughs> my fucking... <laughs> David, no! David, it's okay. I'm, I'm sure it's gonna be next session. <laughs> I'm being carried on a stick. <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> David, no, David. Well, no, I'm David. Trent, please, you'll have your, please, you'll have your David. battle tomorrow, David. We'll diplomacy our way out, David. Don't Trent. worry. I'll make sure we don't fight a single time. No, I won't let no. you die. No, no, no. Transparently. Please, 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 please. Transparently, you guys, uh, Jack, you 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 help them skip a combat again with your. Did I actually? 20. Yeah, that was so funny. You did. No, you can't. There is no. there is another combat. Let me let me show you guys the map because I just want to show you. Wait, there was gonna be a combat? <laughs> yeah. Let's go, dude! Yeah. Hail actually, Hydra! Dude, thank you, mm, thank you, Marvel. I I learned you're that getting, one from you. Getting teased right now, David. I learned that one right from you, Marvel. Mo fucking mm, thank you, thank you, Endgame. Mm. I just actually I couldn't think of a way awesome. to I couldn't think of a way to finagle you guys into the combat after that Nat twenty. It didn't make sense. So there you go. You guys, you guys have uh, passed it. Um, That's so awesome. We, we level up. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, no combat, no XP. I'm gonna go kill myself. <laughs> you can get XP in other ways. No, no. Not in any not ways that matter, man. That's not true. David needs blood. You're for a the damn blood god. fool. Ship log updated. Quest complete. Next quest. It's <laughs> not the same. Google. Um... Next quest. <sighs> okay, oh, Google. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, I'm so sorry. Show me this guy. Another, another, <laughs> another week where fucking the song does not swing the hammer. Did you at least get combat in your other D and D, David? No. <laughs> I did not. No. No, I did not. <laughs> this entire generation has birthed a, a group of pacifists. <laughs> I'm sure we'll fight Blast soon, buddy. In an alternate oh! universe. <laughs> Damn, that's tough. Oh well. David, there's an alternate universe right now where Cannon is avenging his loss of his arm. True. He's like, you took and my arm, Blast. <laughs> and Blast's like, I don't even know who you are. <laughs> oh, I, no, he's made it clear that he knows who I am now. Yeah, I know, but in this alternate universe, he doesn't give a fuck about you. What the f- <laughs> What the f- <laughs> What the frick, man? Not, not cool, man. Yeah. Oh, wait. I don't even know who you are. That's... I had <clears throat> the wrong map token on the board. That feeling when you have the wrong oh. map token on board? Whoa, now. Heck. Is it just- is it just a picture of me? Mm hmm. No, it's uh, it was Braylick's token. Damn. So Roland's I, just I set up this board a long time ago. Baby Dalen. Yes. Yeah. So right now the visual for Roland is he has a child strapped onto him. I imagine maybe I put it on my back. No, Kevin, back, keep the baby strapped to your chest as no. like a form of plate armor. That'd be really funny. It does. You All right, even, time to make an edit. Some, someone, someone, make an edit of this. Oh, there's gonna be. A it's a. Uh, let's be real. It's the. It's the baby. Is it called the pat? The babysitter, the pacifier with Vin Diesel. Yeah. Holy shit! This was gonna be the combat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. Did you make this, Harry? Kreza, the, map, the demon no. savage. Okay, okay. 
This is Our sick. Grog, the fueling fire. <laughs> David, we missed this Zul combat. Zulzom, the warden. Zulzom, the warden. Why are there so many dragon warden here? We did this with the assumption the that like, they'd be off. <laughs> but the, we'll catch him we, off guard. The, no, the whole, no, no, no. The whole plan was that... They, this is like, like our every whole single no, one of the highest no, no, ranking motherfuckers no, in this. No, shut Wait, up. Wait, the Forge no, guy's here. How did he the get here? The entire calculation. <laughs> dude, the well, entire he was, calculation. Well, he was on this I, floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. The entire oh. idea was like, oh, there's only like like 20 or 30 Dragonborn left probably. And we killed like a few. Like there were probably less than 50 left. We killed like 10 of them maybe already. Maybe there's yeah, 20 left. Half of them assume? are probably off in a war. The assumption... Be less Your calculation board. was all based off a of subject. The calculation! There's only the calculation. seven. There's only, or no, there's only six on this board. Yeah, I thought there was a lot of dragon, dragon board total. <laughs> like, that <laughs> was like, <laughs> it'd be like, we're gonna go in there, we're gonna kill the leader. There's yeah, only like it, four dragon board. To, to, to be fair, we haven't. It's so yeah. much funnier though. Thinking it's that's correct. So much, to, to it's be so fair, much, we have Well, you gotta admit, it's so much funnier believing that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, we haven't seen, like, guys, we haven't seen that many. So there it was the assumption that, like, there aren't that many in general. I mean, it's right? mostly out of comedy, but it, it's so yeah. much funnier if we just go with that thought process. Yeah. Would I? So, would I? Is this like their high school reunion? I was under the impression that there actually were just a very small number of Dragonborn, honestly. And that yeah, they just which is uh, true, for sure. hired help. That's what I hired, I mean, raised help. The only place that the Dragonborn are exist in is the um, Red Citadel, so. We should have set charges at the base of the tower. <laughs> but then yeah, they'll fly out and try to fight all of us at once. <laughs> Not Mr. all Dragonborn can fly, we'll just fight the flying ones after. <laughs> Guys, I also have delayed fi blast fireball, so hey, we could set a bomb. I mean, you could definitely take out their single I'm elevator. I'm a huge fan of terrorism. <laughs> and clip it. Shadow boy. Wait a minute, I just Shadow realized boy. what I... Reroll. Oh god, wait. Are, are you... Are we still alive? Are we the good guys? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> are we the baddies? Mr. Yeah, there's, there's, there's not even a hallway. Yet. Oh. For the tower. oh, okay. There's a door that leads to this from a hallway that comes from... All right. You what? I was saying, like, imagine if the elevator door just opened and it was just this room. <laughs> Don't worry, David. Next week you'll be fighting dragons. Uh, oh, well. <laughs> I, can, I can wait a little longer. <laughs> Cannon, that was actually the idea. <laughs> no! No, you said it this session is a hallway. <laughs> Oh no, I'm yeah, for the for the mess hall I was saying. Yeah. Yeah. There is a there you guys have a, a room before you enter the throne room. Oh my god. <laughs> Told you I had some retarded shit planned for this session. Boggers. So are all dragonborn just large by default? Yeah. Yes, they're all large and they're all named. Oh. Oh, that's okay. why it was like it was a funny thing to be like, oh, guys, there's only like five of them left. No, but, on but the real, there are like much. there are less than like they are in the double digits, most likely in terms of amount left. Um, uh, the actual the estimate is probably around 50. So, yeah. That's, uh, that's where we'll leave off. Pull you guys off this map now. Crazy. <coughs> Damn, that's, uh... No combat wild. for David. Wah, wah. Now I'm wah, gonna wah. starve. <laughs> wah, yeah, exactly. Wah. I'm gonna starve. Yeah. David do be starving out here. What are the other, like, normal names I am? Or, like, Jim the Accountant, or, like... <laughs> Someone's gotta do it. Where's Barry the elevator technician when we need him? Dude, I, I still can't get over uh, Jaylen, I love baby. This shit. 
Yeah, yeah. You can't like get that? over Dalen, the Dalen thing. Yeah, I can't get over the Dalen. Baby. <laughs> yeah, did you guys like that? That was pretty what retarded. A, what, a, what, a, what a crazy, just fucking <laughs> retarded ass. <laughs> Harry, did you play it like the chestburster scene from Alien? No, it was just um, it was just uh, like uh, everything open, open air. You know, I'm, oh, you like, could see it the really baby. Did... It really did feel like you're watching a cutscene or something from Dark Souls where it's like, yeah, a marriage is about to happen. And then you're like, what the fuck is happening? Or some <laughs> shit. Like, it did feel like a fucking dark <laughs> fantasy. Like, the, the explanation... Oh, of the marriage of flesh? Like, that type yeah, of the thing? Mar yeah, the, like the marriage of flesh. <laughs> you're like, what yeah. the fuck is this? No, I mean, I, I think that's what Harry's definitely going for with something like this. Yeah, definitely yeah, some that's, weird and fucked up shit. That's that's what I that's. I, I didn't know the extent of it. I was just well. told to do the Dalen thing, and then I was like, "Oh, Pog Dalen's back," but I didn't know how like <laughs> uh, what the actual back. experiment was gonna be. Yeah. <laughs> Pog, dude, Dalen's back, and he's and he's because well, I was like asking Harry for a long time. Yeah. I was like, "Yo, Harry, when's Dalen coming back?" Because last we saw on the map, he's in the thing, and then when Harry told me about this, I was like, "Oh, does Mike know that's happening to his character?" He's like. No, and I was like, "Did Mike consent to this?" Harry's like, "Yeah, he said he can. We can do whatever." <laughs> and I was like, "Okay, Mike consented we to this. Can do whatever. <laughs> we can do whatever." All I knew is that he was dead. So is Baby hey. Dalen like an actual baby, like full on like mentality and everything? You guys don't really Pretty much. Know. Seems like that. Yeah. Looks that way. But but Dalen himself is like. All right, like he's gonna put him back together. Probably not. No. <laughs> we'll see, won't we? Oh yeah, did Nikolai and Relic get resurrected, or what happened with that? They did, yeah. Oh okay. At the beginning of the last session. Gotcha. Wait, so who was Matt playing this session? Braylick or Nikolai? Nikolai. Both. Braylick is not fully resurrected yet. He's Nikolai on the operating cannot right die. They're about to do some uh, procedures on Braylick while we're gone. Yeah. yeah. They're going to yeah. make Ergot Braylick. <laughs> Dude, what if Relic comes I, up back with multiple legs? <laughs> I have a new, I have a, I have a fucking, uh, I have a video background ready to go for when Braylick gets <laughs> It's time back. for Braylick to chrome the fuck up. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Time for you to chrome the fuck up, Relic. We've got a kingdom to burn. <laughs> Relic will come back with two cocks and three what? arms. What? How about bigger arms so I can one hand the the great swords, the great Do swords, great and... swords. <laughs> no, nope, two that, that would actually be hilarious. Do wield the great swords. I was gonna say so I could use my my shield and the great sword at the same time. Dude, no. What if Braylick just gets the Sukuna forearms and he just gets a weapon in each arm, a shield, a great sword, and two other weapons? Wonderful. Dear God, make it happen. Just comes back with four arms. <laughs> Oh, and he gets spell slots, so he can cast spells, too. That's Ooh. Actually, he gains another mouth, and then he can cast spells. The boss when you fight him versus the boss when you get him as an ally. Yeah, I know. I, I, yeah, I want four-armed Heian era fucking... <laughs> it, 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 feel, it feels like we're just turning <laughs> into a, like, everyone's... Cybernetic, uh, yeah. It's becoming yeah, a remember when a wad campaign. wanted to give us cybernetic upgrades with the injury system? Ooh. This is the way to do it. <laughs> it, it feels like... Uh, this is the real way to give cybernetic. <laughs> it feels like Warhammer 40k levels of, like, Good. Uh, augmentation or Throwing some shit. Up. I, I love... I love uh, that whole sequence. Uh, Dr. Alizad's such a fun character. Um, <laughs> Correct. Okay, uh, we need I'm gonna more end this stream. Gapples. Thanks for watching this episode of Tragedy of War. We'll be back same time, same place next week, probably.